Hi, my name is Rob Booth and today we're with the BMW 5 Series Saloon. This particular 5 Series is the E39, or in other words, BMW's fourth iteration of its mid-size executive. The E39 was produced between 1995, replacing the E34, right up to 2004 when it was replaced by its successor, the E60. This 530D is now 12 years old, so we're going to see if it's finally showing its age. The E39 styling is a good balance between aggression and elegance. The almost boxy yet classy silhouette makes it instantly recognisable and the chrome detailing is perfectly judged. The 17 inch alloys look good if a little dated. The front though is where it all kicks off, the four headlights and double grille give an air of ferocity. The angel eye headlights and clear indicator lenses fitted to this 530D are signs of the mid 2000 facelift. Here we see the Hofmeister kink, a lasting BMW design detail. So that's the exterior sorted, let's take a look at the inside shall we? The inside of the 5 Series represents typical Germanic build quality. Everything is very well screwed together and everything is very logically laid out. The cabin can accommodate drivers of all sizes thanks to very adjustable steering and seating. Rear seating in the 5 Series is adequate. However, if you regularly take four passengers, um, I would suggest the E-Class as there's quite a lot more legroom and quite a lot more headroom. Although rear passengers do benefit from a central armrest and air con vents. It has to be said though that the interior is now really showing its age in terms of styling. The dash and instrument cluster do look dated. The E39's boot is fairly small at 460 litres compared to the same era E-Class which was at 520 litres. In fact, it's 20 litres smaller than the current 3 Series boot. The aperture itself though is quite big, meaning getting things in and out is fairly easy. The rear visibility is okay, but rear parking sensors make reverse parking a doddle. Interior storage is fine, but the cup holders are best not to be used carelessly as the mechanism is very fragile. Surprising coming from a BMW. Automatic rain wipers and lights aid to the Germanic goal in making life for the driver as easy and non-distracting as possible so you can focus on the driving pleasure. As with all German luxury executives, whether they're from Audi, BMW or Mercedes, refinement is always top notch, meaning that NVH, i.e. noise, vibration and harshness levels are very good. The E39 in SE form does a good job with dealing with rough surfaces and potholes, not like the E60 M Sport fitted with run flags, which are intolerable. The good refinement of the E39 makes it a very easy car to live with. The driving experience in the 530D is much better than that of the equivalent Mercedes or Audi thanks to very progressive braking, accurate steering and good power. The E39 5 Series was offered with the full spectrum of engines that we see today with the current F10. This means that engines started off with the 520D developing 134 brake horsepower and 280 Nm of torque, stretching right up to the 4.9 litre V8 Monster, found in the M5 developing 394 brake horsepower and 500 Nm of torque. This 530D was the top diesel at the time, producing 190 brake horsepower and 410 Nm of torque propelling this 1575 kilo car to 60 in around 8.3 seconds with the auto and 7.8 seconds with the manual gearbox. The 530D will carry on to an impressive top speed of 155 miles an hour, making this a fully certified barnstormer. Road holding is good with the 5 Series and is in keeping with BMW's ultimate driving machine philosophy. Body roll is kept to a minimum and all driving controls are linear and responsive including the hydraulically assisted power steering giving much more feel than the electric assist type found in the more modern cars.
Obviously, the E39 isn't as safe as newer cars, as we all know how much safety has come on in later years. This generation 5 series achieved NCAP 4 stars for adult occupants, but only 1 star for pedestrians, which by today's standards is pretty poor. The BMW E39 was arguably the best car of its time. Nowadays though, it's feeling a bit tarred and a bit old-fashioned for today's saloon market.